Nobody wants to get united. Like, what we gotta do is meet everybody in Home 49th Street at the bench. The buff, the sworn enemy of graffiti artists, might actually be your best friend. A bit of an outlandish statement, especially older graffiti artists. They're probably gonna hear me say that and go, what? What is this guy talking about? But hear me out. All right, so let, let's kind of dive into this conversation here, starting off by explaining what exactly the buff is for anybody who might be newer to graffiti. So when you go ahead and you do your hairstyles, your throwies, and your pieces, well, the town or city is likely going to go over that, or at least in most places. And that, my friends, is the buff. Whether they're power washing your stuff off the walls, or whether they're using chemicals to scrub it out, or whether they're repainting it, you can consider all of that your work being buffed out. It's a slang term that graffiti artists use, essentially to describe their work being erased from the environment. And back in the day, before the internet and before digital cameras were really popular, the buff was 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 the scourge against graffiti. It was the graffiti artist's sworn enemy, if you will, right? Some writers would go ahead and spend all night on a piece and, and they would make it as beautiful as they possibly could just to have it buffed like a day, two days, a week later. And if you knew as a writer that pieces wouldn't really survive all that long, then you would decide, all right, well then I'll just rock hand styles and throwies. I can get more of them out there at a faster pace. And because there's power in numbers, many of these may not get buffed, meaning my name will still survive, I'll still be getting up, people will still see my name and I'll gain recognition. As opposed to spending all night on one piece that'll be gone and nobody will see it and all my hard work and all my recognition goes down the drain along with it. Because, well, the piece isn't there for anybody to see anymore. Which back then, the most you can hope for is taking a photograph of your work and getting that photo developed. Which still, you're not gonna have any social media back then in order to go ahead and post it to in order to show everybody. So getting up was pretty much dependent on people seeing your work in person. As a result of this, you really wanted your work to survive the buff. You really wanted things that can have some longevity. Paints and inks that wouldn't be so easily painted over. You wanted to hit hard to reach spots that people wouldn't be able to power wash or once again paint over. Such as, for example, heaven spots are a great example of this. You wanted to go ahead and get your name up a bunch that way, once again, as stated previously, you'd have some survivability in numbers. Maybe they go ahead and take out 10 of your tags, but you still got 10 more, 20 more, 30 more still rocking. And that right there is why the buff used to be a graffiti artist's worst nightmare. Especially if you rocked pieces. This also means back in the day it was a lot more important in order to patrol your area, in order to go back to certain spots to maintain them and see how they were doing, to make sure that, hey, if this got painted over, I have to do something new here. This also meant that being king took a lot more work, because not only were you up against other graffiti artists going over your stuff, but you were also up against the buff taking your stuff down. That means you had to get up twice or three times as much just to combat all that stuff to be a king in the first place. Nowadays, people think being king means doing a tag, taking a photo, and uploading it to Instagram and getting a lot of likes on it. Which, as a result, garners a bunch of different eyes from all over the world, and even if your tag is gone the very next day, thousands and thousands and thousands of people can still potentially see your work. And they can see it for years to come. The longevity of your work surpasses the wall nowadays. It's no longer limited to the walls. However, this does bode well for new graffiti artists, and this has actually been a benefit for new graffiti artists since graffiti started kind of becoming popular. You see, when you're a new graffiti artist, you really don't know what you're doing. You really don't have a style. You really you haven't found your footing just yet. So when you rock a tag, you might sit back and think, man, that sucks. <laughs> That's whack. You might do a throwy and think, oh my god, I wish, I wish I didn't hit this wall at all, to be honest. It would have been better off for it. Well, if you're lucky, the buff might come along and wipe your stuff away, making it so nobody can see the embarrassing hand style throw you did and gives you another chance to hit the same wall. Now keep in mind, here on the artist block, we never condone doing graffiti illegally. I feel like that's something I always gotta throw in there, but we know it's gonna happen, obviously. And for the more skilled graffiti artists, the buff doesn't have nearly as much of an impact on you as a graffiti artist, as a writer, as it used to. Because once again, and I stress, the effectiveness of you getting up was solely dependent on not only the spots you hit, but how many people saw your work in public. But nowadays, with online space, nobody's got to see your work in public. So if you're a more experienced writer and you do a tag and somebody goes over it or the buff takes it out, well, your work still lives online. Now, this is a whole different discussion, which maybe we'll make a video about. It depends on whether or not you guys want to see it. But there's a whole different discussion to have about whether or not posting your work online is a good idea, and I think that answer is pretty clear. Regardless, not everybody feels comfortable posting their work online. With that said though, as a writer, let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments down below. How do you feel about the buff? If you want to learn more about graffiti and really jumpstart your work, then check out the books we published in the description.
description down below. And while you're at it, check out the How to Do Graffiti playlist right up here with more graffiti content right down here. And I'll catch you guys back here next week.